I'd like to offer you the <clears throat> most uh, helpful advice that I have ever um, employed myself personally uh, to help me be more effective at making a difference for Christ in a secular community. Now, I'm choosing my words carefully because I could have just said evangelism. But when I say the word evangelism, I think it conjures up a whole bunch of ideas that um, are not akin to what I want to explain. In fact, I want to offer two thoughts because this is brief. Um, one that has to do with um, a foundational issue, a perspective of how we approach the enterprise, and secondly, a, a more operational thing, I mean, what we do in the process that can help us to be effective. Now, the approach that I take, I call it the tactical approach, and I wrote a book on it called Tactics, um, is, is, is uh, in, there's a lot of things that are involved with it, but I just want to give you this small starter to give you an introduction, okay? So here's the first thing I want you to think about that has to do with the way we approach the entire enterprise that we generally call evangelism, okay? Um, I never have it as a goal in conversations that I hope will have a spiritual impact in someone's life. I never have it as a goal to lead that person to Christ. The point I'm making is, is I'm not thinking about getting the person to sign on the dotted line. It's not my goal. And the reason is, is I have no idea generally where that person is in their knowledge or in their process of processing their information about God, okay? And so I have to start somewhere else. I have to start with that person, wherever they happen to be. And if I can get the, the close the deal mentality out of my mind, if I don't think about harvesting, but instead think about gardening, get that? If I don't think about harvesting, but instead think about gardening, which is, means doing the stuff that is necessary for there to be a harvest in the first place, um, then I find I'm so much more relaxed in the environment in the conversation. So I'm not trying to win that person to Christ. I'm just trying to, as I put it, put a stone in their shoe, okay? I want to give them something that gnaws at them a little bit. I want to annoy them in a good way, okay? So that's the first thing. All I'm thinking about when I engage somebody in conversation is trying to give them something to think about regarding Christ or some maybe ethical issue. I'm trying to do a small thing, not a big thing. If a whole bunch more people are doing small things rather than a few people trying to do the big thing, then we are going to have a better harvest. That's my calculus right here. So that's a point that addresses the attitude or the frame of mind that you have about engaging others, what some people call evangelism, okay? Just try to do a little spade work is what I'm saying. Okay, second point, how do you do that? And here's a very specific application of the notion. It's the first step of the game plan. It's not the whole game plan. There's more to it. You can read about it in the book, but here's the first step of the game plan. Gather information. That's all I want you to do. Gather information. Now, how do you gather information? You use questions. You ask people questions about themselves, about their convictions, about uh, what they think, about a variety of issues. If you want to have a spiritual impact, you try to maneuver into that direction. You ask them their convictions about things. Lots of times they're going to volunteer their convictions. When they do, I guarantee you there are going to be ambiguities in their point of view. That's when you ask other questions. Foundational question here, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? It's a model question. It could be used in a lot of different ways. But uh, somebody says, hey, I think everything's relative. What do you mean by that? I mean, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, I know what relativism is. I wrote a book on it, but I don't know what they mean by it. I want them to tell me. And whatever other statements they make, I want to keep asking questions to gather as much information I can about their point of view. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the point of that? Some things that people believe is, is really straightforward, really easy. It's not that simple. They say these things that sound th simple, but there's all kinds of stuff behind it. And what you want to get is the rest of the story. Here's the key. Most people who have convictions about things, contrary to Christianity, have never thought about their convictions. There are all kinds of ambiguities in their ideas, like everything's relative. 
you know, or, or, or there is no God, or the Bible's been changed, or Jesus never existed and all that. I want to know where they got that information, how they came to that conclusion, what exactly is their beef. I want them to talk. And, and the point is, the more they talk, the more they're forced to clarify something they have not probably clarified before. They're trading on slogans that have gotten them by and stonewalled Christians in the past. And when you start asking them questions about it, then they have to think about it. People say, well, all religions are basically the same. Oh, really? What way? That's my question. What way are they basically the same? Uh, you know, that's, you know, you shouldn't be pushing your morality on me. Really? How am I pushing my morality on you right now? Well, you think you're right and you think I should be like you. Well, that's true. Well, do you think you're right and I should be like you? Of course. <laughs> They're doing the same thing. How do you get to that? You get to that by asking these questions. Okay, I don't want to get too far beyond it, more complicated. I'm just saying this. Think about gardening. Don't worry about the end game. That kind of takes care of itself when the gardening is done right. Just give them a little. A little seeding, a little watering, pull a few weeds if you can. Give them something to think about and then let it go. That's okay. That's what I'm saying. How do you do that gardening? The first step of the gardening is to gather information with questions about their views and their ideas and let them talk. You'll be amazed at what God will do if you just do this one thing.